So I, I like to see things that are for developers, and this one is definitely for developers. It's called App Dynamics. It's a system that watches your code, uh, particularly if you're a complex enterprise, and watches your system. So uh, uh, we're going to get into why you need this right now. And who are you? All right, thanks, Robert. I'm um, Bhaskar Sunkara. I'm a VP of Product Management at AppDynamics um, and a co-founder. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about um, um, kind of what uh, Robert just described, which is how do we watch a complex application, make sense out of it, um, make it easy for operations teams to, to work with their applications, to manage performance and a whole lot of other aspects. Um, and I'm also um, excited to talk about um, a, a release we just did. Uh, we just did the spring release yesterday. Uh, it was also our uh, founder's day yesterday, so really, really um, exciting sort of uh, day. So very cool. We had to talk about that. So, so uh, you know, I've had New Relic in here and mm -hmm. other uh, performance monitoring yep. kinds of, of systems. Mm -hmm. Why do I need you? Who needs you first of all? Yeah, absolutely. About yeah, so it's a really good question. How do we know you, we need you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So if you have if you have a business critical, mission critical application, you need us, right? Um, and the key thing, um, and since you brought up uh, New Relic, the key thing uh, where we're different is we're very enterprise focused, and I can talk about some of the aspects that um, you know that describe what the enterprise focus really means and we're really focused on. But mm -hmm. short answer is. But enterprise yeah. means everything from an old school bank that's running on mainframes yeah. and has some, uh, what, what kind of code is that? It's not PHP. It's not PHP. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it could, it's be could be mainframes, could be C++. Cisco, it yeah. could be all sorts of crazy yeah, absolutely. stuff. Could be, uh, yeah, absolutely. All the way to a new enterprise. Uh, well, you know, you look at this uh, wall behind us. Yep. Any of these new companies, they consider themselves enterprises yep. too. Yep. That yep. have complex systems. Yep. Even Instagram, right, has a pretty absolutely. complex system underneath yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. that they need to monitor. Yeah. Um, but you, you're more uh, aimed at the really complex systems. Really right? complex systems, yeah. So that's a good way to define it. That's a good way to break it down. Um, and complexity. If you only have a couple instances on yeah. Space Cloud or Amazon. Eh. Probably not, yeah, exactly. But if you have a, a big a massive architecture. Form. Absolutely. So I think for the large service oriented applications, right, um, you can have anything from you know, 25 to 50 or 75 clusters, right? And each cluster has multiple nodes, right? Um, to give people an operational view of what's really going on um, is kind of where we come in, right? Um, and because the thing that's really hard to answer in a situation like that is, you know, hey, even a simple question like, what does my application look like, right? Um, and people have a bunch of slides and architecture diagrams, but people want a live topology view of what their applications look like and what is really going on. Right. And that's what we're seeing on your screen, absolutely. right? Yeah, absolutely. This so, is, so tell me what we're seeing on the screen and, and uh, how this helps a developer uh, yeah. get get visibility into their system. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is the overall um, you know application. So, so you look at any typical sort of complex application. Um, this is deployed as multiple services, right? Uh, and each box that you see here um, is a, you know it's an individual service, and these services are talking to each other. <coughs> excuse me. Um, Using different protocols, mm -hmm. and that's really what we do. We we are um, the way you set it up. Set us up is pretty straightforward. You install us on all the JVMs, all the CLRs, all the PHPs. We do full, complete coverage. So we're not really used as a point troubleshooting tool, yeah. but we're installed all over because we do proactive monitoring. Now, do you, do you uh, get installed on the cloud instances as well? Because most of the new startups are using cloud instances. Yeah. Older enterprises yeah, have their own absolutely. data centers and mm -hmm. probably. Uh, haven't completely moved to the cloud yeah. yet. Maybe a piece of it has moved yeah. to the cloud. Absolutely. So we work both in the pure cloud setups as well as the mixed, uh, you know, setups. Um, and the way uh, our customers use us, especially if I take the uh, it, Amazon example, is they bake us into the AMI. So when they develop the app for a particular service, they'll bake us into the AMI. So every instance that gets launched has us. And um, you know, as soon do you as it support has stuff, OpenStack and Rackspace we Cloud as we well. Do. We do. We okay. do. We support both of those. I love um, those guys at Amazon, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and actually, that now there's Google and Microsoft yeah. Azure yeah. And, yeah. and a few and DigitalOcean, yeah. right? Let's name all of our competitors. Yeah, yeah. So we do. Um, we do um, uh, Rackspace. We do OpenStack. We also do Azure. We're okay. pretty strong integration with them. 
Um, and Which makes sense because a lot of the yeah. old enterprises are on Microsoft are infrastructure. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then the key for us is that um, we, we, there's another aspect when you bring up the cloud story, there's another aspect that we can chat about later, which is kind of how uh, you manage capacity on the cloud, right? So we use uh, the way we monitor the application, which is telling you, hey, how, how are the performance characteristics, right? Um, you know, how is load versus capacity? And we, when you need to spin up more capacity, uh, we have connectors written into the cloud systems, which can spin them up. Right, yeah. so it's not just you know cloning a VM, but you know when your application is set up, you need to do a bunch of workflows to actually make it work. Right, you need to set up the load balancers to say, hey, there's a new instance. Right, you need to update properties in like an Apache file or something to say, hey, there's this new thing that's came up and it's part of the ecosystem now. So talk, start talking to it as well, start load balancing it as well. So Let, that's um, let's go back to what we're seeing here. So yeah. some things are green. That probably means the server's running well and, and yeah. the links between those servers are running well. So so what this tells you really is it, it it does two things. Right, when you monitor an application you're looking at you know application the way your code's working and your servers which is infrastructure health CPU and everything else so the colors tell you about both so um, so that's why when you hover on it um, it's telling you not just the response time um, but it also tells you the health of the nodes infrastructure wise you know your garbage collection metrics your CPU and all that stuff so all the color coding is based on that um, and a very important thing. Uh, I mean, so you're you're not running at the VM layer. You're running at, in the code in layer the code. that's in the VM. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So We're running. I have to probably add something to my PHP or my yeah. uh, my code that that I'm running. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So for Python a or whatever I'm running. Yeah. So for a Java um, instance, for instance, you uh, want to use the minus Java agent argument, which is just a standard argument for all JVMs that are, that are supported, um, and then it installs us as what we call an instrumentation agent. Um, it gets to watch all the code that's being loaded. Uh, we look at what's interesting, um, and then we instrument it. Um, and when traffic goes through it, we can you know figure out who's talking to who. So Let, let's go back to up to thirty thousand feet before yeah. we go, go yeah. get yeah. It, cut, cut in the weeds. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, if I'm a bank or if I'm a, yeah. a Procter and Gamble or some, some large enterprise, mm -hmm. how much should I expect to pay for this uh, system? Yeah, so our pricing, um, you know, is uh, pretty transparent. It's on the website, um, and we price uh, per uh, JVM per server instances. Okay. And we have a subscription model. Uh, you can do a one-year subscription model, a three-year subscription model. Uh, obviously, it starts off um, with uh, with about uh, you know four thousand per you know per JVM. Uh, but then obviously when you have five or 10 or 20 or 100, then it's uh, tiered pricing and then the discount comes in. So obviously our large enterprise deals, um, you know, we have all that volume discount applied, but that's and at the high level what it is. For a moderately complex system, I, 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 what's the process to build this in? If I, if I don't have yeah. a monitoring, generally they have some sort of monitoring yeah. built in, but mm -hmm. Uh, if I want to rip out my existing monitoring and go with you, how many months should I expect to take with, with that kind of movement? And yeah. do you help with that? I, I, tell me a little bit yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, I'm really glad you asked that question because that's one of the uh, you know, really strong points we have. So when we go in to do uh, you know, a quick proof of concept for largest applications, um, we usually pretty much you know, go in and wrap the same day for them to show uh, value on about you know 25, 30 servers, uh, and most people put us in production, right? And we and dare them. If we dare them to put it, put us in production, okay? Uh, because we're that confident of the you know reliability of the software, um, and the rolling it out is super easy. Uh, a lot of people have uh, you know automation scripts like Chef and Puppet to sort yep. of like roll out um, things onto their servers. Um, and so we get them to roll that out, and then um, you know once the JVMs or whatever are restarted, um, then you basically have you know load coming through. So they they, either, they start popping up on a screen. Like absolutely, this. absolutely. And then the, the the connections between them also start popping automatically because we we correlate automatically. Very cool. So you absolutely. you understand the fiber networks between my data centers and we, we're, we're my, more machi the, my machines and all that fun stuff. Yeah, we're we're more at the application level. So okay. when you're talking HTTP, you know, web services or you know, Thrift um, or JMS or doing messaging, anytime you make a call, we will tag and follow it. Um, and we'll also have context of, let's say, I'll, I'll break down a really simple example so that you know, it's clear, right? So uh, take an example where you, know, you have a bank application and you're basically transferring funds. Yep. So you click on your browser, right? I just did that on PayPal yesterday. There you go, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you, you, you click on the web, you know, on yeah. the browser, it hits a server for the first time. And AppDynamics is on the server, it picks up the activity, 
it categorizes it as transfer of funds because it knows the code that it's doing it. Right. Um, and then as that passes through multiple servers, that particular instance, that particular click, uh, we will tag and follow the whole context of what operation it is, we'll add like a you know GUID so that we know it's attached to that particular user and it'll follow it all through the server. So if that call is going through these three, four servers, yeah. it'll it'll basically um, you know capture all of that stuff. And then we will be able to, you know, not only paint this map, but if you had a problematic, if you had an issue in your particular click, we will capture that and then you know, you know, upload it so that you can analyze that and see what really happened. So, so th this is probably a good screen to have in the network operation uh, operation center, the NOC, right? Yeah, absolutely. Up on the uh, up on the absolutely uh, up on the wall, up on the wall, uh, uh, above absolutely. your team, so yeah. that everybody can look and say, oh, okay, everything's yeah. cool. And that happens a lot. You know, we we're very. This is a very popular visualization in the NOC. And in fact, one of the things that always happens, um, uh, which is surprising, is that when we go into a you know POC, we set this up, and then most people are like, instead of actually looking at the results, they're like. Well, I didn't know this server was talking to this. You know, since when are we actually starting to use that component, wow. right? And sometimes you're like, okay, you know, you always stage and test, right? And then move into production. And sometimes people forget to flip the URLs. And they see on the topology map that you're actually still talking to the QA server. And no wonder the performance is low, right? And so that's what it does for, um, you know, for, the, for the topology and for really kind of doing the live map of what's happening. Um, so, so, so that's the key. So, let's say uh, one of my server instances is filling up. What, mm -hmm. what would what would it show? Yeah. So, I mean, it'll obviously have um, you know um, the red popping up there, um, and um, it will also we also have a pretty sophisticated alerting system, um, and so it'll send an email to whoever uh, it needs to send to send an email to who is sort of like responsible for that particular cluster, for instance. Um, and the other thing that's very interesting that you can do is you can also go to the next step, which is the acting on it. So you can basically say, um, if this server is full, you know, running full on memory, uh, set up a script that you can restart it, because that's what you pretty much, you know, um, end up doing. Uh, it's almost like operationalizing your playbook of what you do in production when things go wrong, right? Um, and so we have that system. We, we call it runbook automation, but you can set it up so that you can act on it. It'll basically send you an email saying, "Hey, this happened. Would you want me to do this?" You set it up, and so you know you click on yes, and it'll actually execute the the runbook Very for cool. it. So it ties it, them together. Tear into that a little bit more. What other kinds of things does it help a team uh, do that they couldn't do before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll show you this really quick so that it gives you an idea. So if you look at the uh, what we call the alert and respond section, it's split into policies, which is basically you know, enforcing stuff on performance, could be events on crashes and stuff like that. Um, and then there are actions, right? That what could you actually do? So when you create an action, you can say, um, I'm gonna notify someone, like sending an email, sending an email message, uh, SMS message, et cetera. You could do diagnostics, because sometimes what you do is when something's slowing down, you wanna go in and take a thread dump, yeah. right? And that's what you wanna automate. Um, and so you can do things like that. Um, you can also start what we call a diagnostic session to get more visibility, to get sort of like deeper level data, which you're interested in only when things are bad, and you don't want to look at all that data when things are going well, right? Yeah. Um, you can do remediation, which is running a script, so you can point to any script, and that script can be pretty complex. Um, we pass in all the parameters of the environment in, so you can basically program your script to act on that. Since we're in a cloud price war between Google and Rackspace and yeah. Amazon and Microsoft, mm -hmm and a few others, yep. DigitalOcean. Mm -hmm. Can you put scripts there that are watching the pricing of the in cloud instances and comparing them and saying, oh, all of a sudden Amazon's really expensive <laughs> and uh, it should move everything to Rackspace yeah, or, you know, or that's vice a, versa, right? That's a really interesting question because we've been actually thinking about some of that also because when you think about application management, you know, the whole price management thing becomes a big uh, yeah, yeah. big thing that we're, you know, it's one of the things that we're cooking up in our labs. But what you could do there is that we have a very customizable system where you could push custom metrics in, and the pricing metrics could be one of those. Um, and then what we could do is we could basically really kind of baseline those metrics. So we have a very powerful baselining system, which yeah, because we might be more expensive per, in, per server instance, per server, yeah. but our performance might be better because we're all SSD, absolutely. Right, now, right? Yeah, yeah. So can you do that? that so we can do that correlation. You could build yeah. up your own dashboard. Um, like I'll pay with a little bit metrics. more for the performance that yeah. I'm getting out of a server yeah. from a different vendor. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. 
Yeah. So you Crazy can, world. Yeah. We better get to work at Rackspace to yeah. make sure we're, uh, yeah, <laughs> price performance uh, <laughs> ratios are pretty good. Yeah. No, that's definitely an area we're, we're thinking deeply about because know, a lot of I our know customers. We're working on it hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, talk to us about that and to make that more visible yeah. um, because a lot of it's so operational. Yeah. Um, so. Well, a lot of a lot of these systems cost. I, I know we have customers paying millions of dollars a month in, in yeah. cloud fees, right? Yeah, yeah. Which most of the startups don't do that, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, yeah. if you don't have any customers, you're not paying that kind Absolutely. of bill. Yeah. But these kind of complex systems, yeah. it's really hard to see with it's thousands really of instances and yeah. lots of traffic going on. I mean, yeah. if you're the you know, if you're running Procter and Gamble, how do you keep a track yeah. of all this stuff yeah. and and see places where you could save some money? Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, or, so or get better performance for yeah, your customers. Yeah. So that's actually one of the things a lot of our customers do on a regular basis, because just with the um, um, visibility we give them into performance versus what your capacity is, um, gives them a really good way of hey, I have a lot of room uh, in this capacity. You know, it could be as simple as you know having a connection pool, or it could be as simple as how many threads are servicing this Apache, you know, um, you know, um, you know, request or whatever? Um, and when they compare them side by side, um, we we have uh, what we call custom dashboards where you can construct your own dashboards to match them up together. Uh, that gives you a really good idea of hey, where can I save my capacity, yeah. right? And that's an obvious win uh, immediately that you can get off the bat, and a lot of people use us for that. Um, and I think uh, at some point very soon we'll build more of a capacity planning type of tool which is giving you more operation analytics. How, how granular is that? Uh, Brett Taylor was just here yesterday. He was okay. uh, the CTO of Facebook for a mm -hmm. while, mm -hmm. and he's building a new company. Yeah. And he showed me as, as you edit a document, he yeah. only sends the piece that you're editing over, yeah. right? which saves a lot of network uh, bandwidth, and yeah. it probably saves his servers money. And, yeah. uh, you know, his whole system's more efficient, and yeah. that customers are happy because it happens faster, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Does it show that kind of granularity of, oh, you know, instead yeah. of moving the whole thing over, absolutely. Yeah. just move this piece over? No, that's a really key point, right? Because especially when things are all great, you know, in an operational scenario, you don't want to be bothered with stuff that you don't need to look at. So we are really, and, and that's the basis behind looking at business transactions, because we actually know that you know, transfer funds is not doing well, for instance. And when we know it's not doing well, we'll collect relevant diagnostic information you know, for that time. And then the other, and so, so that's why the data volume that you're sending on a constant basis is very low, because it's all really rolled up, it's very KPI driven, it's very based on you know, deviation against baseline. Right, so it's very low, um, and then the diagnostics. Right, there's another big angle to it that people don't really talk about when they talk about production systems, because when you uh, start collecting data when things are bad, it's actually the worst time to collect data, right? Because the system's already under stress. Yeah. So the understanding of what is doing well and what's doing not, and being very targeted at collecting the data around it. Um, that's what makes us so effective in production, and that's why we've been yeah. we've been really sort of like on a roll. But on when that. you're faced with a system that's not working well, uh, it probably helps to build a priority list. Like, absolutely, hey, absolutely. Do, fix this first because it'll make a huge improvement it, to the system. It does. Don't fix the thing that's yeah. only going to have a one percent improvement. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we 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 kind of regularly do this uh, with customers where we basically say, um, you know, fifty percent improvement plan. And you know, it's just a series of workflows on our screens, which helps you basically look at the obvious reasons, uh, obvious you know things that are low-hanging fruit that can you know get you get your application performance so, up. So New Relic showed me where, uh, that they monitor when you check in some code, and, yeah. and the system shows that it's slower or yeah. faster. Do you, do you do the same kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, we do the same kind of thing. Also, I mean, because um, it especially the example that I gave you, where you know someone forgot to flip over a. You know, uh, staging database, yeah. right? And then production is still using it. Uh, it becomes so very obvious with our with our sort of like flow map. Um, and we also have a comparison view where you know you do a before and after. Um, and what that let let me show that to you really quick. Um, let me go here, um, and uh, we call it compare releases. Um, and the way this works is it's like a split pane of you know uh, different things. Um, and you could go into individual transactions also, or you could basically let, say, uh, I want to look at the flow map. And when the flow map comes up, that's basically uh, you know kind of comparing. Uh, let me see, let me pull this up. Yeah. 
right. But basically, I mean, you, you got the idea. It's, it's, it kind of does the. A, uh, you'll see a chart. You'll see you'll see the same flow map for that particular release versus this particular release, and that gives you a really good idea of um, you know what changed between you know that point and this point. So so yeah. Um, does it let me watch a global system? Because uh, the customer in India is probably having a different experience than uh, I am in San Francisco, yeah. right? Because of Absolutely. Le network latency yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe uh, servers down over there that, yeah. you know, an Akamai server's down or yeah. something like that. Does Absolutely. It, it does. Does it, does. it let you uh, uh, see regional problems yeah. like that? Absolutely. So let me show you uh, this part. So, so we call it end user experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, it's also really relevant because we, um, we GA'd our mobile monitoring capability. It's been in, in, in beta with customers, um, but um, but you kind of see a visualization like this where all the mobile traffic that's coming in from your from your map it tells you where it's coming from, uh, tells you the breakdown of iOS and Android and things like that, uh, gives you the network performance. So immediately things will start going red from different countries here if you see that, yep. um, and then you can drill down into it. So for instance, you can say I want to go look at what's been really happening in the Acme mobile shopping app. Um, and you can look at the network requests. Um, and when those come up, then basically, these are the requests that your phone's doing. Um, and you can drill down into them also. So for instance, you can say, um, show me what's been happening for some of the bad transactions and for some of the good ones. And so for this shopping app, this is basically like a mobile trace that's going into the backend application. So it's saying it was from iOS, you know, using a simulator, this version, et cetera, et cetera. But the key thing is that it also shows you the transaction on the back end, right? Um, and you can now jump into what uh, the transaction was actually doing, um, you know, on the back end and kind of show the flow map for it um, and show the, you know, the key performance indicators and then drill down into probably what, the, what code was being executed, um, yeah. you know, on the back end. So that, that's, the, that's the key. Uh, is that what you meant by the yeah. global system starting from the geo map and going into? See, I'm not a technical person, so I'm just asking lots of questions. To yeah, no worries. See yeah. how how good the Absolutely. system is and, and where it's good and bad, right? Yeah, I'm trying to ask questions that a CTO would ask. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, what, what would a CTO uh, want to know about you versus the competition? Yeah, yeah. I think um, the key is like like I said, the the, the focus on the enterprise in terms of um, you know how we do total cost of ownership, you know the time to value and everything else and how we handle complexity. Uh, and I think what a CTO would be really, really interested in is how do we break down the visibility in these complex situations, right? When I have a distributed app, you know, how do I sort of like help you manage it? Um, so I'll give you another, another example for distributed apps, for example, right? So you have a cluster with 50 different servers, right? One of them might be doing not so well, you know, even five of them might not be doing so well. That might not actually affect the performance because you basically have 50 nodes in there yeah. for that for that very reason. Um, and so even in terms of how alerting works, right? Understanding distributed systems makes it much more easier for you to kind of um, you know Did, alert on it. Right? Could so, it write a ticket to the data center manager absolutely. and say, hey, take those three machines out and put absolutely. new ones in? Or absolutely. Something? So it can say, hey, these hmm. five are sick. To send you a ticket. Um, and then you can operationalize what you need to do for that. So it really takes out, you know, it, 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 it makes it operationalizing uh, so much more easier. Yeah. So, so Does it help, you know, with, with uh, Rackspace, we're um, monitoring a lot of your servers for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why we have fanatical support, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're doing the work so you don't have to have a data center staff yeah. w walking around mm -hmm. replacing machines. Does it work in that kind of uh, environment where somebody else is helping you manage your uh, infrastructure? Yeah, actually, absolutely. Um, I think we do a lot of work with, um, you know, even MSPs, et cetera. Um, and because they want to kind of have a performance practice yeah. for, for the data center they have, uh, and we make it really easy for them to roll it out. Uh, because of the fact that, you know, you can roll out, um, you know, agents and deployment very easily. Um, it's very configurable. Um, and all, also our configuration is based on, you know, uh, handling sort of big clusters and things like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's so much more easier to manage it on a large scale uh, to provision customers. Yeah. Um, we actually have, um, you know, both uh, deployments both in SaaS as well as on-premise. Yeah. Uh, and we actually have some MSPs who are running our model. So, so it's almost like a SaaS and a cloud model. So they take our model, um, it's not on the cloud, but they host it within their data center. Yeah. So it's almost like our cloud um, for provisioning and everything else is working for them. So we make that really easy 
for wow. Aerospace. Yeah. Tell me about the company. Uh, you guys just had a sixth birthday or seventh birthday. Yeah. Like that. So so yesterday was uh, was our founding day. So that was, that was a sixth birthday. So we were founded um, in two thousand eight. Um, and um, um, and yeah, so 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 Jody. You have four hundred employees. I heard something like that. Yeah, we have more than that. We're uh, I think four fifty. Wow. Something something closer close yeah. to that. So we're growing. So you're not a little tiny startup that just yeah. has five guys. We're in not. We're not. A, <laughs> okay, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we were founded in 2008. Um, so so Jody Bansal is our founder and CEO. He was a, a lead architect at Wiley. Um, I used to work with him there, uh, so so that's where I know him from. Um, and obviously, Wiley was kind of in a similar space um, in performance management, um, yeah. but sort of the older generation. Um, and so that, so that's where we started really kind of um, you know conceptualizing a lot of kind of um, um, you know we, we we thought about a lot of um, you know um, some of those ideas where we were thinking about. So uh, I think that's uh, the starting point of where we started to think. Look, I mean, the application performance stuff is is mostly limited to kind of looking at methods and not the context. Yeah. And um, you know, I I, I saw your uh, Twitter headline, for instance, which is the age of the context, right? Like, yeah. it's all it's all about bringing the context in to what's really executing. Um, it's not really like a, just a method or a server anymore. What is it really doing that's relevant to my business? Yeah. And um, and so we thought about basically that's the core of like what we should do, and that's where the business transaction aspect. Um, oh, that, that's comes cool. In. Any last thing that uh, that somebody should um, consider when they're approaching a system like this? Um, I think you know for them, um, um, you know, this is what we're doing is definitely not to be expected. Um, in in most APM uh, solutions out there, so I would definitely um, you know ask them to kind of challenge you know how much more you know vendors can do for them, um, and to kind of really look at the breadth of uh, kind of what we have, um, and in terms of you know the the areas and the strengths we have, um, that'll give them a really good idea of how it makes it so easy for them to um, you know to manage the complexity. So so managing the complexity uh, and making that easy. Um, is I think what they should be really thinking about. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, um, Where do we get it? Where do we learn more about it? Yeah, so appdynamics.com, and you can um, you know do start a free trial uh, right now. You can go on the you know website, sign up for an on-premise or a SaaS evaluation. Uh, you can get started with the software right away. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes to get value, um, and then um, and then yeah, then you'll discover the awesome power of it. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.